Hey folks here, AshleyAllThingsEntry.com. We're going to talk about class 2 composite restorations and placement with a placement instrument. So this instrument is touted and I'm not going to talk about uh, what brand because I think they're all similar. But what it suggests and it actually I think is fairly helpful and there's not a huge amount of lit, I have the links up, uh, that you place it when you have your, this is a payload dent um, ring system for placing class 2 composites and, uh, and amalgams as well, is that you use it to aid in forming when you're curing that class 2 composite. So you place it, and I'm just following the instructions just like here. So it has a clear, what it says, an optically clear light tip that provides increased curing ability by allowing high light energy transmission to the full depth of the restoration. It says additionally that each light tip has an annular groove positioned four millimeter above its tip to guide the dentist in achieving an ideal marginal ridge position. Okay, I think they're talking about that right there. So what you do is you place it into the proximal box, place pressure against the adjacent tooth, and you can, and then go ahead and cure through using your curing light through the transmissible plastic uh, clear curing thing. So I used this yesterday and I did exactly that. Then I stepped back later on and thought, is there light actually going being transmissed through this thing? Well, let's find out. Okay, so we're set up. We're going to just do a, a, a control check in this little experiment. We've set our the light table on the radiometer. And I know from previous experiments that this is around 1200 and it's going to start pulsing. Okay, so above a thousand. Now let's take, say, perhaps when you do use this instrument intraorally, you're going to be placing it uh, as eight close to the proximal box, your gingival floor, and then placing adjacent pressure, uh, tr pressure to the adjacent tooth. And you won't have a lot of light sort of being transmitted except for through this little light gun. So let's practice it similar to this. Sort of, let's see how much light is going to be transmitted. This is some cardboard covering up as best as possible. So my light is on the, the little tip is on the radiometer. Okay, so we're aiming for just under 200. I'm gonna change the angles because some folks mentioned before, like with the light post, it might be the angulation. It's actually decreasing the amount. Let's try this so you can actually see it. So actually, we're still around 100. Let's see how it's angling here. Okay. All right, so that's sort of covered up. So that's not a light, a lot of, a lot of light. It's like less, maybe 10% of light is actually going through the or transmissible little clear proximal former. Let's try just without that little thing. And even with ambient light, it doesn't make a difference. Let's pull away the guide. Try to hold that as steady as possible. So, try that again. So approximately, actually, it's almost in the way. It's almost inhibiting our, our light transmission. So what does that mean? Well, so in deducing from this mini little experiment that uh, perhaps we're not obtaining the proper amount of uh, curing the light transmission through this instrument in order to fully cure our composite that's now placed at the uh, apical or at the gingival portion of our bra box and surrounding this uh, light tip. Now that what a, probably a, a recommendation fairly common sense would be to after you do cure through this you will have some curing remove it and then use your curing light without it and just cure for the appropriate amount of time that's required by uh, the type of light that you're using the type of composite you're using the shade of composite will affect the, all those factors will affect the length of cu um, curing that you will require by your curing light we're all trying, you know, the real reason why I wanted to mention this was uh, twofold. The marketing of different 
little techniques and gadgets. Gadgets are, can be very helpful, but in this case, perhaps it may actually be helpful, but it might, might actually be detrimental that perhaps we're not obtaining a full cure of our composite, which may lead to an increase in recurrent decay. Now, there are very limited, limited randomized control clinical studies on class two composites. I have a link up from Dental Aegis. Um, and like everything in life, it cha may change, but this is an April 2012 uh, lit review, just basic, basic article, article about placing posterior composites. And if you view this in 2040, it probably won't be applicable. However, just something to think about when you're using uh, new gadgets. That do Are they living up to what they say they're going to be doing? And what can I do to test out, test out um, what they're claiming? Cheers.